need to learn about building codes. There are building codes that apply to residential construction. So what are building codes? Building codes are there to protect us. A lot of people think of building codes and code enforcement officials as the bad people. They're really not. They are basically here to protect us when we're inside of a structure or in another public place. Typically, building codes provide the minimum guidelines for construction and inspection of a structure. So we can design beyond the minimum guidelines, but again, the code is for minimum. It is not there to help you design aesthetically. It is not there to try to keep you from designing what you want to do. In 2012, the building code adopted the energy code or the green code. Again, it all has to do with sustainability of our environment and of our resources. So a lot of municipalities have added those into their codes. So it's always important to make sure that you check to see what codes are involved. So let's talk a little bit about the history of building codes. Building codes have been around for a really, really long time. Um, the existing of uh, building codes goes back to 4,000 years, circa 1772 BC. The Babylonian Code of Hammurabi was the first to decree um, building codes. They had some pretty strict codes. I'm really glad that we don't enforce codes the way they did back then. Let's read through these. If a builder build a house for someone and complete it, he shall give him a fee of two shekels of money for each sar of surface. Basically, he must get paid for what he does. That's not a big deal. We do that today. If a builder build a house for someone and does not construct it properly, and the house which he built fall in and kill its owner, then that builder shall be put to death. Pretty strict code. Basically, if you build a house for someone and it falls down and they're killed, then you get killed. If it killed the son of the owner, the son of that builder shall be put to death. If it kill a slave of the owner, then he shall pay slave for slave to the owner of the house. If it ruined goods, he shall make compensation for all that has been ruined. And inasmuch as he did not construct properly this house which he built and it fell, he shall re-erect the house from its own means. If the builder build a house for someone, even though he has not yet completed it, if then the walls seem toppling, the builder must make the walls solid from his own means. So basically, an eye for an eye is how the building code went back in the Hammurabi times. The book of Deuteronomy in the Hebrew Bible also stipulated that parapets must be constructed on all roofs to prevent people from falling. If you're not familiar with what a parapet is, typically on a flat roof, um, we have a wall that continues up from the main wall of the building. And in this case, this parapet had to be built high enough to basically make a railing so that you could not fall off of the roof. Today, um, our codes have developed and mostly have been put into force from insurance companies. Back in the 1800s, if you remember the great fires that swept through the city of Chicago and other places, Chicago developed a building code in 1875 to placate the National Board of Fire Underwriters, which basically is insurance. So insurance today has a big influence on what codes come into place, because if there is a tragedy, then insurance is the one that has to pay for it. So therefore, they're very, very involved in the code setups. The codes have been refined over the years. The first model codes were from the point of the insurance company to reduce the fire risk. They're developed by private code groups for adoption by local and state government agencies. Used to, when I first started working, we had multiple codes around the United States. We had the Southern Building Code, we had the International Building Code, we had the UBC Code. So depending on where you were working, you used a different code. In the 1990s, they formed the International Code Council, which now has all of the international building codes adopted into that, and that is what is used throughout the United States and internationally. So guidelines and codes that affect home design. You have, of course, your building codes, and then you're gonna have any city or county codes that go into that. And then you could even have homeowner association codes. Certain subdivisions that you live in, you can only have a certain kind of brick, you can only have a certain kind of roof, you can only leave your garage door open for 30 minutes. So make sure if you go to buy a piece of property and build a house that you make sure if there's a homeowner association 
that you can fit into those guidelines with what you plan to build. Green building guidelines, a lot of the different types of codes out there we try to follow. Some of them have even been adopted. The International Green Construction Code, it is part of the International Building Code. And if the city or county adopts that into their code, then that is part of that. We also have LEED, you may have heard of that. That is the Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. There was a really big push for LEED back in the early 90s to make our buildings more energy efficient and more sustainable. What they found was that really all it did was make our buildings cost a lot more money. So they kind of backed off of it a little bit, but there are some buildings that are still designed under LEED. And get into commercial, we will talk a little bit more about LEED and what is involved in that. There's also the National Green Building Standards and then of course the International Green Construction Code. There is a rating system with LEED. Basically, you get so many points for everything that you accomplish in making your building um, energy efficient and sustainable. There are a minimum number of points. You can get a silver rating, a gold rating, and a bronze rating, depending on the amount of points that you get in your building. Building codes are used throughout most of the U.S. That doesn't mean that there's always someone there to enforce them. Building codes, say like in the city of Springfield, they are enforced. Um, Green County, they are enforced. Forest, Christian County they're enforced but say you live out in the middle of nowhere in some small little county you are still required to build by the building code but there may not be anybody to enforce that code so codes basically re regulate issues that have to do with fire structural ability health security energy materials construction just about anything that has to do with building the code is going to address what the model code organizations do they oversee things you've probably heard of something being ul rated that's the underwriter laboratories that's where they do the testing to make sure that say the materials and such are meeting the code requirements also what you have to look for is a lot of cities and counties will make amendments to the code for example when i was working um, in healthcare, we were doing a project for citizens memorial hospital in bolivar and when we went to meet with the building officials we were asking about the energy code because at this point the energy code had become part of the building code. The city of Oliver was not aware of that. So what it was doing was costing the project a lot more money because there are some pretty stringent things in the energy code. They were like, well, we weren't even aware of that. And you know, so this is Memorial Hospital. They try to incorporate as many energy saving things as they possibly can anyway. Basically what ended up happening, Bolivar put in an amendment that the part of the the energy code was not in their actual code. So you always need to look for amendments that go into the code that the city or county or whomever has changed. Again, most everybody now goes by the International Code Council, which for commercials, the International Building Code, IBC, and in residential, it's the International Residential Code, which is the IRC. There are also handicap accessibility codes that if you're doing accessibility design, that you need to go by. If it's a federal or public type building, you have to use the Americans with Disabilities Act or the ADA. And if you're like say in the city of Springfield, you need to check, um, they use the ANSI code, which is the American National Standards Institute. So choosing the right code, that's the responsibility of whoever the project manager is. But you, as a CAD person, you need to know the code too. Things get overlooked. You need to understand when you're drawing things, why things have to be a certain way. Basic tools um, when you're looking at the code. Again, I'm not going to go into this real hard and heavy because you'll kind of be able to see it when you get into the code research that you're going to do today. This concludes this portion of the video on building codes. In the next video, we will discuss local building codes and we will talk a little bit more in depth about how the building codes are put together and how to navigate through the codes.